That's always a good sign. That's there for uh, trucks, most likely. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what we're dealing with today. But first fire up after the four inches of rain. We're heading to an area that we're hoping did not get four inches like this area got. Actually, 4.7 inches to be exact. I see it's another beautiful drying day for the soybeans. Nonetheless, at least they're evening up. I like to see that around the neighborhood. It's starting to get more even. This weather is not allowing the dry ones to over dry. So it's working in the long run. I just hope that it quits with this weather so we can actually harvest the soybeans. So that's a sugar beet field that they, they've been pre-lifting. And oh, it looks really greasy out there. I don't know when beet lifting, like the full harvest, will be starting, but for their sake, I hope it isn't soon. It needs to dry out a lot or it is going to be miserable. Oh my. You guys seen the grain cart slug there so I was running it on 10 or wide open with the hydraulic trap uh, and then there's the manual slide traps inside the cart that you can adjust that's what we're still playing around with to get this cart to unload evenly so after I do fill a semi I don't have a bunch of grain left in the front or left in the back which you just watch your hitch weight display here so right now we got too many manual gates too wide open and so when I go to 10 on the hydraulic traps, it's overloading the slip clutch on the PTO. But it's simple to unslug, undo the belts, back in action in about three minutes. So I gotta get that dialed in. Not gonna do it in the field really, so I'll just run the gates on nine or something, or nine and a half, or whatever I can do without slugging again. Well, I was driving spreading fertilizer and uh, started seeing steam come out from under the hood. And I thought, oh, that's not good. Is it steam or smoke? I've blown a water line. And she's squirting right on all the hot metal. Time to call Duggo. Hello? What did you do to this quad track when you brought it out here? Randy brought it out. Why? What's going on? I've blown a water line. And thought the whole thing was on fire and I was going to burn up. <laughs> Started steaming. So, where's the water line at? Left side of the engine. It's uh, 5 eighths inside diameter. Five, so you just need a coupler or something? Well, I think it's a longer hose and we're going to have to... I can't get eyes in there because it's spraying water out, but it comes out of the side of the block and runs down the frame. I do not know how long it is, so we're going to need a lot of water, maybe some new hose clamps in case these break, and a lot of hose. So you can't, it's in a, it's more than likely rubbed through, you're thinking? No. You just like, it, cut it and put a splice in there, a connector? If you got a splice, we could do that. It just blew a hole right, it's not even close to anything. It, pressure must have taken it out. I uh, got the first headland almost completed, come to try to unload and my tank clutches are slipping because we combined in the rain and they, it's wet in there and wet high moisture corn won't engage, the clutches are just slipping so now we get to fix, well not really fix but gotta take the clutches off and put bolts in there so it runs direct drive again. So they're coming with the service truck. Not really the way I wanted to start out the day, but it's what we got. Okay, well, I'll show you guys, but I was able to fix it temporarily. This is where it was connected to the engine. 
the burst is right here. So I cut just shy of it, pulled it out of some P clips and made it work with minimal damage. That really stung when the coolant got into the open wound. Doug's bringing me water because it drained a lot of water and some zip ties because I'm no longer using the P clips. And hopefully some food because I ate all mine at 10 this morning. But the hose is back on. Tightened with the pliers, ready for another 4,000 hours. You know, I put these here uh, hand scrubber wipes to get the fertilizer off my hands, put them in the tractor. But uh, you think the uh, disinfectant in here, it's got aloe vera and vitamin E, and then some Spanish contents. I think this will sting. That vitamin E packs a punch. Kinda hurts. Cleaning. I have to wipe down the whole tractor. Good thing it's a 90 pack. So I don't know why Brody's worked and mine didn't, but maybe from previous damage with black beans last year. But anyways, these are the clutches which are very, very, very hot right now. We have to take this chain off, this bolt out, these bolts out, pull these off, and then from the back side you can screw in two half inch long quarter inch bolts and then that locks this onto the clutch and that's direct drive. It's not a bad project, I've done it many times. Last year when I plugged my combine full of mud, I have no tools to even start. Or I should say I have tools but not the right tools. So we might as well walk over and see how this combine's doing and show you progress. I don't know what it is. Looks like he's getting it off the top here. So since it rained, my fear was, which is a true fact, see how the ears haven't dropped yet? It's so early that the ears haven't dropped down, hanging down, so when it rains, it actually pools water down in the base of the husk, which is gone now, but it was there. And then it actually soaks back in to the corn, which makes our wet corn wetter yet, but I think it's gonna work here. What I don't like seeing is with this higher moisture corn, I'm seeing stuff come out of the back of the combine. Now I don't know why, and I'm not satisfied with it because it's definitely out here. There's definitely corn here. And it's laying on top of the trash, so it's, head, it's not head loss. Well, we thought what better use? It's made for fires, but how about we clean the tractor with it? Don't know how to use this thing. He's playing with me. Well, they're made for fires, but they also clean stuff. It can be used for just about any purpose. It's this guy's shirts that get me through the day. It's always something new. I like to keep it interesting is all. That's good, Chris. I like to keep it interesting. I've been trying to tell Chris to smile more than I would enjoy working with him. <laughs> To the rescue, Duggle. Have we got water back in it? Probably not enough because it drained out and the thermostat's left open and I'll just keep an eye on the, the coolant reservoir. But let's try to uh, finish another field here without anything else happening. All right, four bolts later, service truck, four guys. About 20 minutes, wasn't bad. So now we're ready to combine corn. 
Moment of truth. We're good! Awesome. Okay, well, now my tank unloading ability to shut the tank off is non-existent. So, hopefully the car keeps up today. There starts the loading on the road. Oh gosh. It's too wet to get semis in the field, so we don't have a choice, unfortunately. It's gotten to that point already. So this is actually the field that we were planting with the deer high-speed planter and then the precision high-speed planter. And we are skipping passes every other one. We ain't gonna have yield comparison because it is two different varieties. Here's what the map looks like. Right here is what I believe Dad was planting with the precision. Right there is where I was planting with the deer planter. So we'll have a nice side by side on varieties, but as far as deer versus precision planter, that's in a different field to see if that compares at all. So we're bringing trucks in the field now. The first guy, he made it out. He said it was slippy, slippy right on the approach, but he made it. So why not try it again? All right, we had to pull the green card out of hibernation. Chris, the uh, new guy, can't keep up with the two combines and really good corn. Nothing against him. It's just good corn and a more square field. So two carts needed. I finished fertilizer and I'm heading that way. It is five, six miles and I know he really needs the help right now. <laughs> so for the next year or so, if I've got uh, dinner stuck in my braces, and I'm talking to you guys, I'll just kind of pre-apologize on that. I try to keep them clean, but for those that know, you know. It gets everywhere. That being said, you cannot beat this office view. About all I like about this thing is I got the Bluetooth. Get to listen to a little bit of music. Otherwise, I would sit in the red quad. Look who showed up. The big Swede got done spreading. Heard he had a breakdown, but uh, Better late than never, I guess. So he's running the 9RX on the 2596. Chris is running the 2598 and the 580. And boy, am I glad to see two grain carts because we got into some really good corn here, actually. And nice half mile long passes. Chris was just struggling to keep up. So I've been trying out this speed automation where it drives itself, like literally it's adjusting the speed. It does pretty dang good in consistent corn, but we're in, like, the low spots are really, really good corn. The hilltops are, it's okay corn, but it's burnt up, less yielding. So then it, I'm tuning on it, but it definitely is a cool feature. I think it works better in more consistent corn, though. The last field we were in, it was actually working flawlessly. This field, it seems to be pulsating the speed more than I would. So like right here, it's controlling the speed right now. It's also controlling the rotor. So it actually ties together pretty good, it seems like. I got a lot of corn in my tailings. See, that's what I mean. It's overdriving right now a little bit. The yield loss, when it gets above the green, that's not a good thing. It means it's coming out the back of the combine. I also don't like seeing corn in my tailings. I should only see corn cobs in there. So I could open up. Look at it. It's adjusting so many things I don't even know where to start. But it's a cool feature. Still working on figuring it out. You spilled. Just a tiny bit. Nice. Oh! It got dark out. <laughs> I guess that's a wrap on the day, guys. Thanks for watching today's video. And we'll see you in the next one.